the days are getting shorter, the nights are getting longer, and it's more important than ever that we get our fresh fruits and vegetables, especially when it comes to painting. It's probably 6 p.m. here, which means it's pitch black. I'm going to bring some light color and hope through the winter to my studio by painting this pomegranate. Kids can't wait for pomegranate season and I can't wait to play with my gouache. I use a glass plate. You can tell I've used gouache on this plate before. I think I didn't wash it off because I just like looking at all the different colors there. And I have a variety of brushes, but usually I use, maybe for this, a number six round. So let's get started. You can see my perspective of the pomegranate as well as the light sketch I did on my paper. And this just indicates where I have my shape and where the natural curves of the pomegranate are. You can almost see the seams that come down the side, so I want to preserve that. Otherwise, it might just look like a ball. Um, I want to be able to show my reflected light. I want to show my shadow side. I want to show the, the um, reflection of the light that's just above this. I have one light source of above here, which is really helpful when I'm painting a still life so that I can see a definite shadow. So this makes the lighting pretty dramatic and interesting, and I'm going to get started. I'm gonna take some of my Cad Free Red, mix it with a little bit of Alizarin Crimson so that it's not quite so red, although I can always work over gouache. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint the parts that are um, brightest. And kind of follow that curve of the pomegranate. I am by no means an expert in gouache, which I know is just what you wanna hear when someone's teaching you but it might be reassuring to know that I am just learning this and so I'm making my own mistakes and exploring and kind of just having fun with it. Normally I paint in acrylic and lately I've been doing a lot of serious, more serious work, portraits, um, although not all portraits are particularly serious. I did a very funny spooky portrait the other day for um, in honor of, I guess, this season as we come into Halloween. You can tell I'm all ready to leave that behind. I noticed that people on the street started putting up Christmas lights this week. And then I saw a joke on the internet, uh, probably Facebook, that said that snow came early when we put our Christmas lights up early. And you know who you are. You're, if you are one of those people doing it, you're responsible for the early snow that we might be getting. All right, I am gonna preserve a little bit of that white. I have worked in watercolor as well, so there's something appealing to me about preserving that white. Um, of course, it's not gonna be exactly how it is on the pomegranate. All right, now, I've done my lightest red. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work a little bit more with the alizarin and crimson, which is a bit darker. Still gonna mix in some of the cad red or cad free red. I was really excited when I saw that some of my favorite um, art supply companies use CAD Free Red. I did not know this existed. I might just be ignorant. That is entirely possible and probable, but um, I thought that was a nice option because I have to wash my brushes in a sink that goes to the drain, that goes to the public sewer, that goes to, I don't know, a plant and I feel like putting a bunch of heavy metals into that is either um, contaminating things or overtaxing a, a system, a purification system. I don't know if they can purify for all that, but um, I haven't asked, although it's not a bad idea to ask those questions when we get our water report. 
All right, I'm going into the shadow area now. I so boldly mixed my green and my red together. If I use this limited palette, it brings greater unity to my work. Um, so that is what I'm doing. I'm careful not to add too much water. Let me show you my palette, how it's looking at this point, guys. This is my palette. You can see I've got a lot of alizarin crimson, cad red. I um, am using a permanent green, a yellow ochre, a Hansa yellow, white gouache, and I got this fantastic linden green. Let me get back to it reminiscing about water quality and my paints. All right, so this is a pretty hard line that I'm drawing in here. I will probably be adding something to this, blending it together a bit. I improvise a lot. I'm adding a little bit of alizarin crimson because it doesn't seem to be quite as dark up here. And yet, I still want to see that shadow. Okay. So, back down toward the bottom a little bit. And, hmm. Now we pick that color back up down here. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over some of the intermediate areas with a medium red just to blend it a little bit so it doesn't look posterized. I used to love that function in my photo uh, editing programs, posterizing things. But here I don't really want to posterize. I want to make this reflective light. Um, well, I'm going to make it white. It maybe mix it with just a little bit of red so it's not a stark white. White is really white when you have it against something so dark and dramatic. So let's do that. I could also take more time to let this paint dry, but I'm not going to because I might be one of the most impatient artists in the world. And that is not to my credit, but it does lend itself well to working in my usual medium, which is acrylics hmm. I might bring that up just a little bit because I kind of think it's too yellowy looking I used Hansa yellow and the white so I'm going to add a little bit more white to this oh that is very white I don't want it quite so white Ugh. it's just a lot and there is a bit of a texture on this, so I don't want it to look too smooth. I'm avoiding this area over here because it's taking longer to dry. Okay. I'll bring that red up a bit at the bottom. Now is when I start to get a little bit funky with my paints. And even though I did everything in pretty good order before, now I'm going to go ahead and, apparently I'm going to color outside the lines, but 
I'm also going to give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of variation because it's very unusual to see perfect fruit. There's a uh, company I wanted to try called Imperfect. Imperfect Vegetables? Imperfect Produce, that's it, Imperfect Produce. It seems like it would be really good, but uh, I oftentimes shop organic, and I have the luxury of doing that. I feel very grateful for that. My produce is almost always kind of imperfect, and uh, especially when I pull out of my garden. It's funny when you start getting fruits and vegetables that look like body parts out of your garden, you know? Um, carrots that are all twisted that look like they're um, limbs and other body parts. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about the shape of it. Still need some work. Maybe we'll hit this highway up here. Okay. This highlight, I want to make it a bit brighter because, as you can see in the fruit itself, it's brighter. Um, I'm a little hesitant to just use stark white. You can certainly do that, but I think it's not quite right. This light is so warm. That's all I got for now on that white. All right, I'll work on this this nice little, probably where the blossom was. In fact, not probably, that's, that's where the blossom was. You can even see inside it, um, you can see the remnants of blossom. So I'm gonna mix up some yellow ochre with some green and maybe just hit a little bit of the alizarin crimson to brown it out. Yeah, so we're using this limited palette, even as I'm doing this at the top, allows for unity. You start getting into a full rainbow, and it looks, I think it looks a little bit cartoonish sometimes. I mean, it's totally fine to go with a whole rainbow. If that's your jam, go for it. But I've learned, over time I noticed, I did this painting of uh, I, one of the volunteers I used to work with years ago on the beach. And he, um, I wanted to paint his portrait. And back then I was just beginning to develop my uh, portrait skills. I was not very good at all, but it was even worse or developing, I don't want to say worse, because I think that's pretty harsh and judgmental. I'm not sure I need to go there. Um, it's all a process, it's all a journey, so it's, it's all good. But what was less developed in my art practice was my use of color. If I saw something at the art store, a new color, I bought it. I wanted every color that I could possibly have. I have a feeling this is something that probably most artists go through in their art careers, their artistic development. Okay, I'm liking it a bit more. I'll tell you, I could probably play with this for hours. I won't make you endure that unless you're ready for bed and you have a cup of cocoa and you want me to talk you to sleep. And this is still wet up here, so I just want to be a little bit careful. It will, gouache will act a little bit like watercolor if I'm not careful. Oh, I like that, okay. There's a bit of green in here, so I am going to, yes, I am going to use that linden. I'm gonna brown it out a little bit with the color that I use for the stem, but I just, oh, a little bit of linden, a little bit more linden. Linden is a beautiful tree, blossom, and herb, medicinal herb. 
How many topics can I cover in a single painting session? Well, I don't know. Maybe you could keep track of it for me. Remind me to go get back on topic. I feel like I'm going to be 50 this year, so so I'm entitled to uh, begin spinning yarns that are endless. My kids would probably say, Mom, you're already there. They get exhausted by my stories. Okay. I'm going to pause there because it's going to start getting muddy if I keep adding paint to that already wet gouache. Now, I notice that there is no uniform red. It's all kind of mixed together. So I'm going to just work on this a little bit and I'll try to do it quickly. I don't want to keep you longer. I know you're dying to get out to the store right now and get yourself a pomegranate to mess with, huh? going to do a shadow down below and while I did sketch my pomegranate I did not sketch my shadow and so I want to do that I want to sketch my shadow a little bit why because I've taken the time to paint this and I do not want to lose it because I put in a weird looking shadow that I then have to try to fix with white gouache. That's something I will try not to do is fix, thing, fix things with white gouache. I am totally down with using it. Right now I'm running a little bit of a white line around it just because I feel like it. That's too red, it's just too red. So I put a little green in there. Love the little trees. This is actually very thin and is spreading like watercolor. And that I could either call that a mistake. Um, maybe uh, one of my old art teachers would swear that it's a happy accident. I don't like happy accidents. I like intentionality whenever possible. So I can always go over that with a thicker gouache. The way, the way to make this, I think, pop, I love that, making things pop, is probably not to leave the white around the edge. Although I kind of like that little bit. I might just do it. I'm going to leave a little bit of white because it's fun. I'm all about fun, right? Probably not, but I do love painting. let that dry and then it's going to be really important that I bring this red up at the bottom here because I want it to be set off. Um, ooh, well that's, that is setting off, huh? Okay. Why not? Why not make it sing? And I feel like I need a little bit more yellow in there at the top. So I, like I said, I'm using a Hansa yellow. Hansa yellow is very soft and it is a very, it's my dog scratching. Anyway, it's very creamy and not as yellow as a cad free yellow or a lemon yellow, or I think in gouache, they probably have a, a designer's yellow. They seem to have a designer's everything, so. Get a little bit of this yellow in here. Put 
Let me get that. Ooh, hey, that was too much. Okay. Well, we're kind of bad, huh? Yeah. Get rid of some of that yellow. Put it on and take it off. I'm cleaning my brush and before. I'm just going to lift some of this, I think. I'm going to move it around a little bit. I don't need to um, paint over things right now. So I'll just remove. Mm-hmm. Alright, I'm gonna go back to these edges so I don't screw that up. So I have another happy accident. Happy intentional accident. Okay. What else? Because I am gonna take a bit down here. And ooh, that feels good to squiggle that line a little bit. Yes. The simple things that make me happy. I don't know. It's all about learning and growing. And so it's pretty easy to just mess around with gouache. I, I like I said, I'm pretty new to this, so I don't have a perfect technique down. I found that when I started teaching myself acrylics, which is, I'm pretty much self-taught. I have taken art classes in, in a college setting, um, but I find that this is how I learn best, is by doing it and pretending like I know what I'm doing. Maybe we call it fake it till you make it. I don't know. I don't like that term so much, but I do like the term believe it until you become it. And so far that has served me pretty darn well in the arts. Believing and making a whole lot of mistakes, throwing a lot of bad artwork out, and continuing on with a lot of determination, a lot of hard work, and a lot of hope. I do believe we're all creative, and I do believe that art heals us. It's been important to me throughout my life. I'll tell you about that some other time. Okay, you know, I think I'm going to call this about done. Uh, add a little bit in here. But yeah. Just call this done for now. And again, not perfect, but fun. And gouache is really cool. Thank you for painting with me this evening. My pomegranate and my pomegranate painting in gouache. I went back into it and tried to blend the shadow and the reflected light a bit more. And I can certainly do more with this. But it's obviously time to go to bed. I think you can hear... My beloved dog, Oakley, snoring. Good night, everyone.